Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you had an awesome Saturday. I did laundry and I cooked french fries for dinner tonight because my husband went and played music uh, for at a church. Anyway, we had a great day today. I hope you did too. I can't seem to be able to get my top camera in the right spot. Sorry about that. No, oh, excuse me. Okay, so these were my words today. It's the upper room. And so I woke up periodically during the night thinking the upper room. And I'm like, what does that mean? So this morning, God clarified it for me. It means that the body and blood covenant that Jesus had between the apostles and since he had this with the apostles and they wrote a lot of the New Testament with us too and so I thought wow that's great so then I looked up some um, an article about it and I looked up some scriptures and then I listened to Joseph Prince talk about the communion and so we're going to do communion tonight. Uh, I'm going to start doing communion like once a week or once every two weeks. I haven't decided, but I'm going to start doing it. I don't have grape juice tonight. I have pink lemonade that I put um, food coloring in and made it kind of a grape looking. And it's a very sour like grape juice is. So anyway, that is what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to explain a song that I found today that is just, I've heard it before, but I've never really listened to the lyrics until today when I got this, this, um, this lesson, this idea for this lesson. And so then I really started listening to it and I thought, wow, this is such a great song. So anyway, I'm glad you're here with me tonight. And, uh, I'm going to jump into some prayer. God, we just thank you. We thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control and that you love us, God. You love us no matter what. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament, too. You are the God in our lives, God. You are um, magnificent and powerful and mighty. And you are the righteous judge, God. You will judge all unrighteousness. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge. And so much more, God. So much more. God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and faithful, trustworthy, God. And you are patient towards those that are lost, God, because you want none to perish. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals that have strayed away the prodigal sons and daughters that have strayed away from Jesus from you and the Holy Spirit God we just pray that they would return we pray that they would repent of their sins and we pray that the relationship that they once had with you would be reconciled God God we pray for the people in Florida we pray God that you would be with them that they would feel your presence that they would feel the arms of Jesus through others, that they would see the love and compassion of Jesus in others' eyes, God, that the prayers would help them, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, all the rescuers, all the family members, the government officials, God, it has been a long two weeks, more than two weeks, God. We just pray that all, all of the people would be found and that their families would be able to have some closure. God, we just pray for 
all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for all the people that are sick, God. We pray that you would give them, that you would heal their bodies, that you would strengthen them, God, that they would feel your presence in their sickness. And we pray for their families too, God. We do. We pray for this little girl that's in the hospital in Dallas, a new friend of mine, God, a new sister. God, I just pray for her niece. I just pray that you would heal her body. Pray for my friend's brother that you would heal his body, God. I pray for any others that are sick out there. I pray for my friend that I graduated high school with, God. I pray for her. I pray for her healing. And God, we do pray for people that have lost loved ones. Over the past few years, God, we just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And that they would feel your presence in the absence of their loved one. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, my pray and share warriors. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are so awesome. So I'm not quite sure how I want to start this. Oh, yes, I do. I want to start, I think it's in Matthew. I want to start with the upper room story. I think it's in Matthew. I'm just going to have to look. I was going to look that up this afternoon. Oh, there it is. Matthew 26. I forgot. It's on this, it's on this piece of paper that I printed off. Okay, 26, Matthew 26, 26 through 30, but I'm, I'm going to read more of that. I'm going to read more of it. I'm going to read all of 26, all of Matthew 26. Wow, it's really long. Oh. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to read most of it, though. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Jesus knew what was going to happen. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtly and not kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman, a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. And when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. And you know what? It is. It is. It's part of this story. That is a memorial for her, for what she did for Jesus. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests. Well, we know who Judas Iscariot is. He is the betrayer of Jesus. And said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they con convenated, 
convenanted. I've never seen that word in here. With him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he saw an opportunity to betray him. That's Jesus. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. He knew who he was talking about. He already knew who was going to betray him. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth, as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It has, it had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung an hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. And then Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three. Uh, thrice, three times. And Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. So we have read that part before. But there are other versions of this, too. And maybe it's over here. There are other versions of this story that say, let's see if I can find another version that has what I'm looking for. I wanted to read about Jesus washing their feet. Two. And I wanted to read the part where he tells Judas to go quickly and do what you must do. Sorry. See if I can find it here.
it's not in Luke. I don't know whether the story's in Mark or not. I apologize. I thought what I wanted was in Matthew, but I think that it might be a different version. There is Mary anoints Jesus. Okay, here it is. It's in John. Okay, so let me see where to start here. I'm not going to start at the beginning. Okay, this is also the part where he is washing their feet. Um, now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. The supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wash and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do Thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know there hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Again, he's talking about Judas. He knows. He knows. Now I tell you before it came that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one to another, doubting of whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. That was John. Um, Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, 
Satan entered into him. That's what I was looking for. Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, By those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, Whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, A new commandment I give to you, given to you, that ye love one another, another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Whither thou goest, Jesus answered him. Whither I go, thou canst follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I, why can cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. So again, he was telling Peter that he was going to deny him. Mm, 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 mm. But this is not an account of the full okay. uh, Lord's Supper. Mm-hmm. But you find that a lot in the Bible because these are different accounts of different people's story. Let's see if it's in Mark now. I didn't see it in Mark, but it could be. Now I'm in Luke. Forget that Mark is not very long. No, it is in here. It is in Mark 2. I'm not going to read it, though. Take, eat, this is my body. And he answered, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. Son of man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed and brake it and gave to them, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank all of it. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine, until that day that I drink in it new in the kingdom of God. Okay. Well, I have some more verses, but I forgot to read what I wrote on Facebook, and I'm going to do that right now. Then we'll look up some more verses, and then I'll talk to you about um, what I listened to Joseph Prince talk about this afternoon. It's been a day just full of God bringing me knowledge, maybe knowledge that I knew that maybe I had forgotten, or maybe new knowledge. I'm just not sure. So my words for today, the upper room, the body 
and blood covenant between Jesus, the apostles, and us. I found this song that Upper Room, no coincidence, this is the name of the group, and Lindy Kofer and the circuit riders sing, like both both of these bands. The Upper Room sings this. It was kind of like a co-writing thing. And Lindy Kofer and the circuit riders, they all, they all sing this song. I love the lyrics of this song. But the bridge is really what fits what God is trying to teach me today. I love Worship Together New Song Cafe. I love hearing the message behind all of these songs. My thoughts today, where would we be if the apostles said no? What if they said no to this new covenant? Mm -hmm. What if they go, no, this is too much. We're not going to take this bread and we're not going to drink this wine. We're not going to do this. I mean, where would we be? If that had happened, we probably, I would not be sitting here. Um, like earlier in the Bible when he had talked about that, you know, some people had just turned away because it was just too, they didn't understand it. Um, we want no part of your body and your blood, Jesus. What if they would have said that? But 11 said yes. And because of them saying yes to partaking in this new covenant of Jesus' body and blood, the willingness of Jesus to go to the cross to save us, to take the time to teach these apostles and prepare them to carry his cross into the New Testament and into our lives too. Because all of these apostles wrote the New Testament and, and some others too, but mostly... Peter and Paul and um, John, you know, several of them wrote the New Testament. If they hadn't have said yes, if they hadn't have said yes to this new covenant. You know, Paul came later, but Jesus, you know, he, he had an a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus on the road to um, Damascus, I think. Yeah, because the road to Emmaus was... Yeah, okay, the road to Damascus. Anyway, so back to what I wrote. Uh, I never really thought of these parts of this new covenant before. You know, I've taken, I've taken the the uh, communion like most of my life. Like I got baptized when I was sixteen. Um. I'm going to say baptized because I didn't get saved. So I started taking the communion then. Well, then I got away from going to church, and I quit taking it. Um, but then I got saved, so I take it again. You know, we don't take it as often in the Baptist church. So God is always teaching us if we are willing to learn. I love the lyrics of this song, especially the bridge. This is what the bridge says. Thank you for breaking the bread of your body, spilling the wine of your love. My heart will sing forever. How beautiful is this bridge and how true that we should be thankful that Jesus was willing to break the bread of his body and spill the wine of his love, which was his blood for us, for our sins. How beautiful is Jesus for giving his life for not just me, but for everyone in the world. Maybe all of this old revelation for many. You know, a lot of people might have already realized all this, and that's just we're not all at the same place spiritually we don't spiritually know truth the same we're all on a journey together but maybe in different places on the path um, I see clearly that this new covenant between Jesus and his apostles made it possible for me to be sitting here at my computer typing this message is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon his name and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. Time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3.16 
through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So you don't have to... You don't have to go through a salvation message. All you have to do is pray. All you have to do is ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to come into your life and be your Savior. You don't have to have this prayer. It's a good guideline. But you don't have to have that prayer. You can have your own prayer. But Jesus wants, God wants a relationship with you because he loves you through his son, Jesus Christ, which is the only way to achieve salvation. Okay. Well, let's talk some more about some of these other scriptures that I found. And I've decided that I'm going to start taking communion about once a week or once every other week. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm going to pray about it and get God to lead me where he wants me to be on that. Okay, so let's see which is first here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. First Corinthians. Okay, Paul is the author of First and Second Corinthians. Um, and Paul was not at the upper room. Like I said, Paul had an encounter with Jesus later on. So 619 through 20 says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So this is talking about our body. Our body is the place where the Holy Ghost lives, where the Holy Spirit lives. Our body is called our temple. And so our, our soul was bought with a price, and that was the price of the blood of Jesus. That was his <laughs> sacrifice on the cross. That was the beating that he took before he even got to the cross. He was, he was beaten to where people couldn't recognize him. That's how badly he was beaten. So we are to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are God's. Once we've accepted Jesus, we are God's. We are God's children. Okay, let's see what 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31, 12, 12 through 31. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So through our covenant with Jesus through his sacrifice and us asking Jesus to be our savior we are part of that body we are part of that body of Christ that made us a part but more than that we are a part of the kingdom body too for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is it therefore not of the body. And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, 
where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? And but now are there are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, such more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Oh, that's me. That's me as I get older. I'm more feeble. <laughs> and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, mm -mm. upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that which lacked that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care for one another now this is talking also about our churches that we don't all have the same job but every job that is done in the church for the glory of God through Jesus Christ his Son, is important. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, to do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Oh, these are question marks. These are questions. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show unto you a more excellent way. So we're not all the same, but we're all part of this one body of Christ that gave his life for us, that laid down his life for us, and then raised from the dead, and he is alive today, and he is alive in us today. So let's read some more scripture. I'm getting hot and my child over there has a blanket on. I'm like, you have to be older to understand. Okay, Ephesians 3, 6. Ooh, Ephesians 3, 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So we are fellow heirs and of the same body, the body of Christ. And by, uh, Jesus is the promised one. He is the one that was promised all through the Old Testament. He is the promised fulfillment. Okay, let's read Ephesians 4.16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So again, every part fits perfectly. But that's with our human bodies too. It's like only God could have created these human bodies. They're just like amazing. They are amazing. I took anatomy and physiology and I was just blown away by the things that I learned, the checks and balances that God put inside our bodies. You know, um, it's amazing. Okay, well that concludes 
this part. I don't know whether I read that or not. I don't know whether that's Matthew or 1 Corinthians. Hang on, I've got one more verse. My child sleeps like his daddy with his mouth open. I do too, though. I guess it's a family thing. Okay, 6, 15 through 17. Okay, that is a good one. Okay, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take membership of Christ and make them the members of a hall, of, of an harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So we are, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are part of the body of Christ. We are part of our church, which is a church body, too. But we are all, all over, every state every country every all over the world if you are saved through Jesus Christ you are part of Christ's body and we all need to be thankful and grateful for the blood that he spilled for our sins okay I may read part of this this is in Bible Gateway, salvation is free to us, but it was never cheap. Nothing in all human history has ever been so costly. Jesus probably alludes to Isaiah 52, 53. Still more probably, many of his words, such as body, blood, and poured out, suggest sacrificial terminology, especially since crucifixion itself required no blood. Romans sometimes fixed criminals to, to crosses with rope. For the forgiveness of sins appears in... Okay. I don't... I can't even... I don't know what those words are. The Last Supper was a symbolic act, like the triumphal entry and cleansing of the temple... Interpreting the elements of the Passover feast, the bread, the bitter herbs, and so on, was a standard part of Passover tradition. But instead of using standard explanations, Jesus interprets two elements, those representative of food and drink and blessings at Jewish meals, in a strikingly new way that the bread is Jesus' body means that it represents it. We should interpret his words here no more literally than the disciples would have taken the normal words of the Passover liturgy. This is the bread of affliction which our ancestors ate when they came out of the land of Egypt. Even had that bread not been eaten already, one might fear it a trifle stale after some 13 centuries. That Jesus was also in his body at the time he uttered the words, further mitigates against interpreting the bread as literally equivalent to his body. The head of the household who had been reclining would sit up to bless, give thanks for the bread before the meal. After the meal, Jesus interprets the third or fourth of the Passover meal's four cups. This represents the blood of the covenant. After partaking of this cup, Jesus utters what resembles a traditional vow of abstention, in this case vowing not to drink wine until the coming of his reign. After a few hours of discussion here, perhaps abbreviated, a household would sing the remaining hymns of the halal, undoubtedly the hymn to which Matthew 26:30 refers. Yeah, it talks about a song that they sing. On the way out 
also for me, since I worked for The Promise for so long, whenever we start talking about the upper room, I have a visual. I've, I've seen that scene so many times. I've seen it played out so many times. And our guys would sing, He is Jehovah, walking out, and they would sing it a cappella, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful the way they did it. And so that's what I think of when I think of the upper room is I think of I have a visual. I have a visual for it. But I've never really thought about it being that the Passover in the upper room was the coming of the new covenant. It was seeing if these apostles would accept what others had denied, you know, taking part of the body of Jesus, taking part of the blood of Jesus. But these said yes. These 11 said yes. Now Judas didn't. Judas took the bread. Judas took the bread and he did not take the wine. Or that was an account in one of them. One of them was kind of vague. The other one was kind of vague about that. But that was something I was wondering about today was Judas. Okay, Judas, I know that Ju Judas took the bread and then he left. He didn't get the wine. What, I mean, what possibly would that mean? I don't believe that Judas was totally committed to Jesus or he wouldn't have betrayed him. And then again, sometimes I think that Judas didn't know they were going to kill him. I don't know. I don't know, but God does, and God knows all of this. So tonight, I wanted to do something a little bit different, and <laughs> I have my, <laughs> this is not grape juice, <laughs> this is not grape juice, I don't have grape juice right now, <laughs> this is pink lemonade with um, red and blue food coloring, that looks like grape juice. But believe me, it does not taste like grape juice. Grape juice tastes better than that. And I have my cracker. It's kind of in a strange little shape. I have my cracker too. So I was watching Joseph Prince this afternoon. And he was talking on Life Today. And he was talking to... Um, what is their name? I just went blank. Betty and what is his name? My sister-in-law works for him. Um, Robinson, James Robinson. James Robinson and his wife Betty. He was, Joseph Prince was talking to their grandson, Brandon, and his wife about the, um, the communion and why we do communion. And so, he actually led them through communion and I wrote it down I wrote it down because he said healed by his stripes forgiven by his blood is the wine or the grape juice but I wrote down what he said and I'm gonna do it like this and so if you would like to put this on pause and go get you some grape juice or water or whatever you have in your house and a little piece of cracker, we can do this together. And like I said, I want to start doing this once a month. And I mean not once a month, once a week. I used to do it once a week as Church of Christ. And uh, I've heard that doing the communion has um, properties as a Christian, benefits and blessings as a Christian if we do the communion. And we do it worthily to who offered his body for us and who offered his blood for us. And that doesn't mean that we come perfect but that come, means that I believe, I've been taught, we come repentant. We repent of our sins. We take some time and repent of the sins that we have in our lives. And then we take the communion. 
So I'm going to take a few minutes and just pray to myself some of the things that I think that I'm failing God in some areas, and I'm going to ask for forgiveness, but I'm not going to do it out loud. So maybe you want to do the same thing. Okay, so I feel like I took care of some things that maybe are not pleasing to God. Because as Christians, we are not perfect. And I know a lot of people think that we are. We know that we're not perfect. That's why we need a Savior. So let's take this bread. I did this. I wrote down the wine first, but you do the bread first. So this is my lovely little piece of bread. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you that by your stripes I am healed. Lord Jesus, I thank you that by your body I am made whole, completely whole, in Jesus' name, amen. So now let's take this bread. Now let's take our non-grape juice. But it looks like grape juice. But I love this little class. I'm going to start using this for my communion. But I'm going to get me some grape juice tomorrow. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this cup. It's the new covenant in your blood shed for all the fruit. For all the forgiveness, I can't read my handwriting. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this cup. It is the new covenant in your blood shed for all. The forgiveness of all my sin, past, present, and future. Thank you, Lord. All my sins, I remit it. Amen. Wow, that's sour. <laughs> pretend, pretend grape juice is sour. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. While we were yet sinners, God, thank you. When he gave his body for us and that he gave his blood for us. Thank you, God, that you raised him again so that he can offer us eternal life, that he can offer us an eternal home by his sacrifice, God. Thank you for teaching me about the upper room today, God. I really appreciate it. I will always have my mind and heart open to learning, God. Please continue to teach me until either Jesus comes to get me out of here by the rapture or you choose for me to reach my expiration date here. Whichever God, I trust you. I trust you fully. I trust you totally. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for coming to get me when I was lost. Thank you for saving my soul and making me whole. Please heal my body. 
please teach me to be who you want me to be. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I believe on the nights that we do communion, mm. I am um, going to maybe do a mm. really short salvation message. I hate to, I hate to assume, I used to go to a church and the pastor would say, we're all saved here, right? And it just didn't feel right because you never know. You never know. Um, our pastor is not like that. He always gives a salvation message. I may give this one if I can read it. It's a really neat one. Okay. We're going to do this one tonight. I got this at YEC in one of my bags. It's pretty cool. Excuse me. And it says, Keys to Life. God loves you and has a great plan for your life. Jesus said, My purpose is to give life in all, full, in all its fullness. John 10.10b 10, 10, Sin separates you from God. We are all sinners. Romans 3.23 the price for sin is death, Romans 6, 23. The price has already been paid. Jesus already paid the price. God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners, Romans 5, 8. Jesus bridged the gap of separation between God and man. It's free eternal salvation is a free gift Ephesians 2 8 through 9 you don't earn by, you don't earn or work your way to heaven by morality or religion Jesus is the key to life I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me John 14 6 so it's up to you to ask Jesus into your heart pray Jesus I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. It is important to be baptized, go to church, pray, read your Bible, and share with others what Jesus has done for you. Like I said, it's really simple. Keys to life. Key to life. Salvation through Jesus. Partake of the body of Jesus. Be in the body of the church, whichever church, whichever denomination. Make sure they preach and teach about Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, and you'll be good. So my Pray and Share Warriors, I already prayed, so I am going to say have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday going to go worship with my church family. I may do a family function. I'm not sure. I had a few problems today with my stomach. So we'll see how tomorrow goes. Maybe my fake <laughs> maybe my fake grape juice will help my stomach. Who knows? All right. Well, much love. Much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.